Hi everybody, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench, back now with part 10 of this build. I was thinking this was going to be, you know, three or four parts, straight beginner's build, and then I sort of started getting into these additional techniques with oils and chipping and blah, 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 blah. And I'm sure some of you would rather see that. I'm sure some would rather see a, a sort of beginner's build and just build it. But, you know, I want to cover everything. I want to cover things. And you have to admit, you know, the extra bit of work done on getting that cab floor and everything and look at that seat you know it, it's all well worth it at the end of the day um since we've been off camera i've gone over and put matte varnish on here i've actually used this one here the ak ultra varnish matte there are many many matte varnishes out there um some are better than others i find that one to be the best for being a matte varnish as in you know giving you a matte finish i've also done the stretchers and as you can see, there is no sheen on them whatsoever. They are dead flat. The downside to it is it's not very hard wearing. You could, you, I could almost rub that off. Um, in fact, I did actually spray some on the floor. And then when I went to put the wash, it just rubbed off. So it's, um, it's not the toughest of varnishes at all. So bear that in mind. I've also given the leather parts a bit of a sheen with a, with a very light coat of gloss. So they've got a bit of a sheen to them. Not really too fussed about because you're not really going to see them because they go in here like that and then the stretcher goes on top like that. So as you can see, you, you can't really see much of it at all in there anyway. But, you know, I wanted to show you how I get that sort of leathery look. And I think you'll agree it kind of has a bit of a leather look to it. You know, um, you could go on and do more. You could now come on and... You know, with a matte varnish, dry brush the corners to break the edges down. We may do that, we'll see. So what I want to do to start with is look at some building. The only thing I've done off camera, I put a black wash on the engine and gearbox and then went round, as you've seen me do so many times, with a cotton bud and just get it off. Did the same on the axle. And all it does, it gives you that kind of definition of all the detail that's in there. Okay, so, you know, you don't need to see me do absolutely everything multiple times basically as you know what i tend to do is i get this stuff here this is the oil wash from um from modeler's world this is the black brown i put it on as i did with the seat leave it for half an hour and then get a cotton bud and just remove it you know either roll the cotton bud over it for a blotchy look which is how you kind of get this blotchy look on here or you can brush it along which is how you get that kind of look on there and then I've rolled over it after it's sort of dry and we've got that sort of you know it's it's very very it's 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 uneven it's got lots of tonality I don't have the words in my vocabulary to describe it I'm not intelligent enough for that but anyway so but you can see it's got that sort of linen look and as you remember it was all masked up and now I've unmasked it and you can see we've got the wooden frames in there and everything so that's all cool. Um, I do need to go around and paint those bits there green because those frames, they were actually like metal legs. They should have holes through them and they need to be green. So I'll have to go in and paint those green. Um, and that's really about it. I've done no, nothing more. Oh, I did paint the, I masked off and painted these leather pads here. Gloss, again, not too fussed because they're going to be covered by these things going in like so. So we're not going to see much of them anyway. And then, of course, you're going to be looking in the back. So, you know, but it's all about how I've done this. It's not about, you know, we could just build it with the door shut and have it done in 10 minutes and that'd be that. This is all about showing you guys how I get these different effects. So now we start need to start looking about pushing forward and how we're going to get on. So I think the first thing I need to do is get these stretchers, the feet painted green. Uh, I'm going to use once again my, my AK Real Colour for that. And get that. This is one of the big problems with the AK real colours, the lids really do glue on. So I'm going to grab a brush. What are we going to use? We'll use this one, I think. We'll just grab a brush and then we can just come along here and just put some paint on. I've got too much paint on there. But not to worry. One thing with acrylics, if you put too much on it, generally sort of dries back okay. Okay, so we only really need to do one side because the back side's going to be hidden, but hey ho. 
we may as well do them all, haven't we? The beauty of doing everything, the thing is, if you only do one side, you have then narrowed yourself down to having the stretcher in one way only on one side of the vehicle. So at least if you do them all, then you can just put them however you want. So there we got the, the green legs now painted on there, you can see. So I'll go on and do the rest and then I'll come back. You don't need to watch me do all of that, do you? Um, I don't think there's anything more I need. I do need to paint the handbrake and the gear lever, but we'll come to that later. So I'll go on and get these legs painted and I'll come back. Okay, so I've done those. Um, <clears throat> so now we're going to start looking at getting some assembly done at last. Right, so we're going to glue these leather seats. These, um, we should be putting the stretchers in first into the, into the back here, but we're going to wait for the paint to dry on those legs. Uh, so we're going to put these leather seats into these bases here. Now, for this I'm going to use super glue, um, purely because it's quick. Uh, it's in an area that we're not really going to see. It doesn't need to be particularly strong. One thing to remember with super glue, if you're new to the hobby, especially at normal super glues like this, they tend to be quite brittle. So, for instance, if I had glued this with super glue into here, uh, if I flexed it like this, it could crack. It could just crack and break away. Whereas it's done with liquid cement, this stuff here, the time extra thin, it's welded together. So the plastic is sort of molded together. So it's much, much stronger. So super glue doesn't weld the parts together. It just glues them on the surface. So bear that in mind. It's great for doing small parts and stuff. But remember that if you knock them, they will likely break off rather than flex. So um, just bear that in mind. So as these are going to sit in here and then get covered up with stretchers, you're not really going to see them anyway and they're not really doing anything. They're just going to sit in there. I'm going to use super glue. So and I need a couple of small drops. So for this, I'm going to use this ordinary, no nonsense from Screw Fix if you're in the UK, high strength super glue. It's great stuff. You can buy special super glues. I have got some on the way from Premium Hobbies. He is now starting to do the VMS products. Um, so... By the time you see this video, I'll have it already and tried it. But this stuff is very, very good. This is the MIG Ammo uh, Cyanacolate Slow Dry. And this stuff is brilliant because it's, it's sort of slightly flexible. The lid doesn't glue itself on like all the others do. Um, and it takes a little while to dry, which is good. So I'm just, what I'm going to do, I've got a, a Pringles lid here. So if you like Pringles or if you don't, whatever. Pringles lids are really good for a super glue. So we're going to put some on there. Now I can't remember if I've done any super glue work or not. So if I repeat it myself, I'm sorry. One of the big disadvantages with this is as you pull it away, it tends to string a lot. Okay. So bear that in mind. Now I'm going to put the super glue on here and I'm using this thing here. This is called a glue looper. You can get these on Amazon if you look for them. It's just basically a photo etched piece of stainless steel. It's just a photo etched piece of stainless steel that goes into an exacto knife handle and very very handy for super glues and stuff because it has a small eyelet in the end. So all I can do now is just drop that on there and because it's got time to dry I've got a bit of time to position it so I've got it in position and that's that in place. Do the other one here We'll grab some super glue on here. Just put it in there. Just like that. I've got a couple of fairly big drops in there. Um, and that's done for a reason. It's so that it will actually get itself stuck in there well. Okay, so that's that glued in, so that's that fine. So we can leave those to dry. And we can put our super glue over there to one side. You will see a lot of modelers, they will put super glue on a piece of tape here. Okay, they'll get a piece of masking tape with them. And the trouble is then you can put your arm in it, you put your tools down in it. You might drop a part in there, I've seen that done as well. So, you know, it's best to have something you can put out of the way. Some people use little um, uh, beer bottle tops. You can use those. 
um, or you can indeed use a candle. Apparently the super glue lasts a lot longer in a candle. Uh, there's a million different ways of doing it, but I, I prefer to have something that I can put out of the way. So there we go. Um, so they're glued in place now. And then the next thing we need to do here is glue these into these sidewalls. Okay, so we've got the sidewalls here. So we'll get these off of the sprue. And we basically left them on the sprue for ease of painting. And then we've got to make sure we get the right bench onto the right side. So I'm going to take away these sprue nibs from here. There we go, just like so. And then come in with a, just put my finger in the paint, the green paint when I wipe the lid off. Um, I'm going to get a 400 grit sanding stick, like so. And then just sand away those sprue nibs and also sand away the paint from the edges where we're going to be gluing it. Do the same here. That's the beauty of having the paint on there. It gives you a guide. You can see when the sprue nibs have been sanded. There we go. Sand and stick out of the way. Now we have our sides. Now we need to make sure we get the correct side. As we can see, we've got these two sides here. This cutout here goes to the top rear. Okay, so you see that cutout there, the cutout there, that goes to the top rear. Okay, so basically you've got these end pieces here that the end of the, if you look, the um, the stretcher goes in. And then the handles butt up into those ends there, as you can see. So they have you have to make sure they go forward. So you want those on the opposite end of that cutout. Now what I've done, I've come along and done it the wrong way round. Um, what I've done, I'm going to remove some paint from here. And also a little slither of plastic as well to make it go together a lot easier. Okay, and then do the same on this side. Because it's all fairly tight and we don't want to we don't want to mess it up by breaking anything. So that's gonna go into there like so. And that's gonna go into there like so. Okay, so this is the back, this is the front. You can see back has got the cutout here, front has the legs on the top of the of the seat. So you can see how much of that leather in there we can't see at all. So there you go. And all we've got to do then is because we've done our bit with removing the paint, we can come in from behind. This is the beauty of having liquid cement. We can come in from behind with our liquid cement and just put a drop in there and a drop in each of those there. And there we go. So that's them neatly glued into there. Do the same on the other side. Scrape away the paint from the inside. Same on the outside. I have also previously scraped some paint away from in these slots as well. I was dry fitting it before I put the camera on. There we go. Bits of dust on there from doing the sanding. Again, coming behind, extra thin in there, extra thin in there. There we go. There we are. So that's those glued in. So wait for those to dry. I'm also going to wait for these stretchers to dry because they've got the green paint on them. 
and then we can get all the stretchers glued into all our uh, little rails. Right, just looking at this, and we've obviously got these tracks. Let's use these tweezers for pointing. We've obviously got these tracks here that the stretchers run along. Now I know that these legs here on the stretchers are sort of bent over steel. And looking at, I've just been looking at some uh, some photographs of the interiors of these things, and it looks like these tracks are also steel. So what we're going to do is paint them as steel before we do our washes and stuff, because we're going to do some washes to make all this detail pop out. We've got this sort of rack and pinion system here. You can see the the teeth, and that's where they turn the handle and it wound the um, the the stretcher up to give them space underneath for another stretcher. Uh, so we're going to, you know, make sure that's all um, sort of covered with steel as well, or covered with sort of painted to look like steel, um, and also those tracks because they would have got scratched and chipped and everything with those stretchers sliding in and out. So I've got here some Viejo uh, steel. This is model air metallic. This stuff is absolutely brilliant for brush painting if you want to depict, you know, localized areas, knobs, buttons, switches, whatever. Uh, small areas that you want to cover like like this so out of the bottle it's a little bit thick so I'm just going to grab a drop of water a tiny drop of water so it's about 30-40% thinned with water because I want this to flow I don't want to sort of paint it as such I want it to you'll see what I mean I'm going to take some of that paint off the brush because there's too much on there right so just going to run this brush down here and as you can see rather than painting it it's almost like a wash okay so I just want to depict a steel color without actually you know have it definitely because one of the problems with silver we'll do these ends on here as well they probably would have been brass wouldn't they actually one of the problems with silver Whenever you're using silver paint uh, as a, a means of weathering or try to depict something like this, you don't really want to paint it silver because it's very much in your face. You just want to kind of give it a silver colour. Okay, so there we go there. It doesn't really matter if you go off the edge like I did there because if it's steel it would have got chipped and... And it's all about adding a bit of variation. It's something else for the eye to pick up on. That's all you're after. It's just running that silver paint down in there, thin as it is. You see, I'm pushing the brush right down into it to keep the bristles in. And it also helps me follow the track. So I'm not sure if you could pick that out there, but we've actually now got that sort of silvery look. And then we'll do the same on these rack things here. Because the paint's so thin, it will flow in there. And you don't need to be super good at detail painting because the paint, I don't know if you can see on here, but the paint will actually flow itself in there just like that. Okay. And do the same there. We'll do the same there and then we'll put a black wash in there to depict the teeth and grease or whatever would have been on there. I don't know what would have been on there. Okay so there we are. So now we can see that we have our silver tracks. We can put some more paint there if we want to. Brighten it up a bit. We have our silver tracks and we could also just depict some steel chipping on here if we want to. Just lightly touch the brush on there. I mean the thing is these aren't very accurate anyway because they should be like little bent metal frames. I'm sure if somebody comes out with a photo etch set for this they'll make these as brass. Put too much on there. Okay so you could just do that around there if you want to and uh, I go from there, but you can um, do whatever you want, really. Now, I would imagine that when that stretcher goes in there, yeah, that side there, so what we're going to do is just depict 
and silver in there. Some steel on there. Just like that. And there we go. So that's that done. Right, what else? Okay, I've done a little bit of brass on there, just brushed some brass onto those little things at the end there. Uh, so now I've got some of the <clears throat> Modeler's Royal Oil Wash. This is the black brown. And we're just going to put a little bit of wash in places just to sort of pick up on the detail. As you can see here, we've got these teeth for this rack and pinion system. I can just put some oil on there just with a tiny brush and just brush it down. And that will actually pick up all the detail on those teeth. Just makes it all look a bit more interesting. We could do the same in these tracks, even though we've only just painted them, we can run some oil down there. So I call it oil, it's, it's actually oil wash. I should, I, with these beginner videos I should be careful with my terminology. <clears throat> it's basically an oil wash, it basically means it's, um, it's like an enamel paint or an oil paint thinned in a um, odorless thinner. So if you want to make it yourself, if you've got whole humble enamel paints, get some odorless thinners. Don't use ordinary turpentine, it will it'll destroy your plastic. Uh, you can make your own. So just brush some down in there, just like so. And then the same then in these tracks. On the ends there. And brush that down. Just like that. Brush some in there. We don't need to worry about this end here because no one's ever going to see it. It's up against the bulkhead. This here we can just come along and put some drops of oil around those bulkheads rivet heads wherever they are or you could just brush over the whole thing if you want to just like that and this is the beauty as I keep saying this is the beauty of this stuff you can do what you want because at the end of the day you can take it all off again so we'll add some washes in here just to add some features to that same in there There we go. As you can see on here, I did the wrong end. Had a wash in there. And what we're trying to do, it's not necessarily depicting dirt. What we're trying to do is highlight the detail. and Just make the, the edges and the corners and everything stand out. Uh, same here down these vertical lines. We'll put some wash in there. You can see it will chase down. Put some in there, put some in there. Remember this is canvas in here so it would it would sort of get a bit grubby. You can't really clean it very easily. Which is why we did the pre-shading if you remember way back about 50 parts ago because this is becoming a very long video series. As you can see, we're just adding, just adding detail. And that also, as you can see, I'm not being at all careful, neat and tidy, whatever. Okay, so that's that. That's basically the look you're going to get. Put some in there as well.
and as you can see when you put it on first of all it looks a bit garish but it soon fades back to basically nothing all right so we leave that to dry as we've done before and then what we do is rub over the cotton bud and it will just stay in the corners and remember subtlety is king you don't want to be going in and you know absolutely soaking it with black and everything try and avoid using black other than on the engines and axles and stuff like that black is great but it's very very garish I mean in reality a lot of people say nothing is black and nothing is white so you know if you're looking for subtlety and accuracy of your models and you want to look good steer away from black steer away from white There we are, just do the same down here. Get the wash in all these bits here, these brackets. Get some wash into all these corners. And there we go. I didn't do those little brackets at the bottom there, did I? And as you can see, details that you may not have noticed before will now become more obvious. And then we've got to do the same on here. I've already done in these vents. All I did was put some wash in there, let it dry, and then went over the cotton bud. But you see, you get down in here. And those little brass end stop bits. Get some actually into the brass end stop bits. Get some wash into that door frame. So it runs into all the detail, picks up all the lines just basically highlights everything same in there same in there and there you go you can see all the lines now and everything all the lines on the bulkhead have all come out it's all been depicted and then we'll put some in these tracks I'm going to need to get some more oil I think put some in those tracks so I'm tempted to build this up and then put the stretchers in after. Same down here. Same down there. And then I'm going to put some in these corners down here. As you can see, we're just basically just picking up all the lines, all the edges, all the detail. And then we'll rub it all off again. <laughs> Come on, I just, I don't want to pour any more wash. I just want... It's the one downside with these modelers' washes. They have this dispenser, you just drip some out but the trouble is you can't drip a tiny bit out. you generally get nothing or a great big drop of it and there we go we will be doing some work with the floor don't worry I'm not leaving the floor perfectly clean yeah I'm gonna have to get some more I can't Get away with it without having to put another drop in there. Trying to get a tiny, see you can't get a tiny drop, you have to have that huge amount. I guess, I, I suppose you could always take the little dispenser out. But basically now we can go back to square one and just start running it into all the corners and everything. And it will chase its way around. Just like so. And 
There we are. That's better. There we are. So we can we can see now we're running it all around. Get it in all the places we want it. And there we are. You can fill your boots. You can come with another layer on top of it if you want to. Just dab it on and it will capillary around. If you really want it to capillary into the joints much easier, then if you give everything a gloss coat first, it will run into the corners a lot easier. You can see you know, that you can see on there now with the pre shading we've done. If you remember, we did the black first, and then the white, and then we put the cream over the top. And with the wash as well, it's given us this sort of canvassy look, which is what we're after. We're after this, it's not a white painted wall, and even if it was, we'd still do this because it adds interest. And again, like I say, a lot of this is going to be very difficult to see even with the doors open. But the purpose of this video is to show you how I do these things. It's not necessarily the way to do it. It's not the only way to do it. It's certainly not the only way to do it. But it's how I do it. And how I'm doing it on this model. I may do it differently another time. There we are. So we'll leave that now for a good couple of hours. Let it go off. And then we can come back and, and do some... Uh, removal and if we need to we can put some odorless thinners on a cloth and rub away at it just like that pick up on those brackets in there which I forgot about as I say it's just making it all a lot more interesting what we could actually do now is put a pin wash into this hatch in the floor. Let's see if that will run around. There we go. Some more on the outside there, get it to capillary around. Way over the top. That's what we want, it's way over the top. And then in this area here, we could do the same, but we do need to be a little bit careful because the paint is matte and it will stain. So you don't want to be brushing it as much as I'm in the back there. What you will end up with is, it's nice because it's it's accurate, is you'll end up with, if you can imagine if you've got matte paint, oily hands or greasy hands going on it, then it will, you know, as much as you scrub it, you'll never get all that oil off because it sort of soaks into the surface because the matte paint is porous. Well, guess what, guys? This is oil and that's matte paint. So, you know, what more accurate can you get than trying to depict oil on matte paint than putting oil on matte paint? Here we are, and this, this all here is all behind the spare wheel, so it's. But I'm just doing it to show you. Dab some in there around that frame, get it to capillary up. It doesn't capi the the oil won't capillary at all well in matte paint. Get some into the corner door frame because the door is going to be open, so we're going to see in there, aren't we? There we are. Put some down the side there. Not that it's going to get seen. Put some across the top. They're on that light switch. There we are. And you can see that's really, really soaking into the paint. But by the time that dries, that will be very, very subtle, but it will be interesting to look at. Again on the stretchers we can just come along the ends 
just brush some in there just like so just brush some in the ends like that So put some around where the handles meet the meet the canvas just to give it a bit of a shadow. Just like that. And as you can see, by the length of these videos and the number of videos there are, there is so much you can do rather than just painting something green. So there we are, right. I'm going to switch this off now, let that dry, and then we'll come back to it and deal with it later. And I'll see you when I'm doing that. Right, so we've been a couple of hours now, and you can see I've done one, and this is the kind of effect we're looking for. We've got this kind of oldy fashioned look to it. It's just added a bit of interest rather than just a a white wall. So what we're going to do, we're going to use a hard sand, a hard sanding stick, no, we're going to use a hard cotton bud. Um, <clears throat> and as I say, this has been on here for a couple of hours, so it's pretty, you can see I can rub it, it's, it's pretty dry. And what we're going to do is rub it. Let's bring the camera in a bit for you, so you can see what I'm doing. What we're going to do is rub it, but we're only going to rub it vertically, okay? Hey, misses. We're only going to rub it vertically because basically anything that was there, any staining, would run down the wall. You might get sort of blotches on the wall or whatever, but anything we're trying to depict here, which is basically, you know, staining whatever, whatever would run down the wall. So even on these, these horizontal bits here, if we rub ver vertically, we can make sure... Just go across there a bit just to take some of that out, but we can make sure that any marking we get is up and down, not across. It's almost like you're doing rain streaking on a window. You wouldn't have rain streaking, you know, on a house window. You wouldn't have rain streaking running across the window, but it would only be up and down. And that's the sort of thing we're looking for. And as you can see, we are getting a streaking effect on here. As you can see there, you can see there that streaking is a little bit too obvious so we just come in with the clean end we can go in circles or whatever and just remove what looks a bit obvious and if you aren't happy with that still you can take some uh, I'm not prepared here at all uh, where is my here we are I've got some odorless thinners here okay I can take some of this on a cotton bud just get the cotton bud just damp, wipe it on a cot on a paper towel so that it's not wet. And then we can just rub that over there. And what that will do, that will remove any of the marks we've just put there. Again, keep it vertical because it's going to kind of streak it. Put the top back on your thinner so you don't knock it over. Well, if you do knock it over, it doesn't spill. And then we can put that down there. We'll keep that and we'll get, grab another cotton bud. And then we can work on the bottom. Again running vertically as you can see any marks that we get any lines we can just rub away or turn them into streaks and there we go and as you can see it's all working out very nicely indeed And then, then I want to remove, I could just take that one that's dampened with a bit of thinners, and just rub over it. Like that. And there we can see we have the second side done. Now this area under here, with a dry cut and bud, not a wet one, just go in. And under here. And just basically rub away where the oils are and that will get you the effect you're looking for. And under here we want it to be quite dark and definite because it's in the shadows. 
basically areas like in a cockpit or something like in the bottom of a cockpit if you've got to look in and look for it make it all a bit more over the top so it looks normal if you kind of you know rudder pedals in a cockpit if you really want to make them pop really make them pop you know bright silver and black wash and they'll really pop um, whereas something up around the edge you'd probably go for a a very very faded silver or maybe even a light grey over a dark grey rather than silver over black sort of thing so there we are that's that done we've got a bit of a drop there we can get rid of just rub over the outside there and then on the end here this is the wrong end just rub over same on here just rub over and it leaves those those bolts or rivets or whatever they are it leaves them highlighted as you can see there Okay, so let's come back out and then I've done one side here in the back as you can see we've got some, got some fairly dark streaking down there so I can just lightly rub over with this cotton bud which is dampened with thinners get another frog, in fact I'll get a soft one clean one and then just wipe over like so and that will get rid of all that darkness that we had there so basically we could come in and use the soft I'll use the hard one sorry just rub over you can see it's pulled some out of there so it's still a bit wet because it was pulled again stay vertical work into the corners This will really help you to get your effects you're after. I don't even know which one was dampened now, so I'm going to throw them all away and start again. It's the best thing to do with cotton buds, don't ever reuse them. You know, if you use cotton buds to soak up glue or whatever, chuck it away. Don't, don't put it on the side because you might pick it up. If you use it to soak up some super glue, the super glue might have hardened. You use it on a clear part and you'll scratch it. So, you know, be very, uh, be very wary of what you're doing. So there we are. Just come in there and wipe that away. As you can see, you can end up with a very sort of distempered look and on the other side you can see here we got all those oils have dried now and they've soaked into the green it looks awful but when you rub it again staying vertical you can see that you can get this kind of stained look to it now the camera is really picking up on this I don't know if it's because it's matte but what I'm seeing just get into that corner the horizontal to get into that corner what I'm seeing is not the same as you're seeing on the camera. What you're seeing is a very definite dark staining around that panel line. What I'm seeing is a very, very subtle darkening of that area. Just get in there. As you can see, I mean, cotton buds are one of the best effect tools I think there are. Okay, so I want to take a bit more of that off. So again, I'm going to take my odorless thinners and I'm going to use a soft cotton bud so that I know which one is which. I'm just going to dampen that in the thinners. Just wipe it off on my paper towel so that it's just literally damp. And then, because we've used an acrylic paint, the odorless thinners won't affect the acrylic paint, but it will take away the wash. So there we are, we've got rid of most of that now. That was the effect I was looking for. Do the same on this side, get rid of some of that so it looks better for you guys on the camera because doesn't look very nice at all from what I've seen on the camera. And there we are. And you can see there we've got 
basically a weathered look. It has a bit of a sheen to it because it's still damp, but that will dry out. So if it doesn't, if it remains sheeny because you've rubbed it with cotton buds or whatever, just give it a flat coat and it'll look absolutely fine. But we can see now that we've got a weathered look to it and it just looks a lot more interesting than looking at a green slab of bulkhead. Yeah? Right. So we're ready now to start doing some assembly. Let me get the instructions out. So we need to, I'm going to put all this together before I put the stretchers in, I think. We need to not put those stretchers in. We've done all this, we've done all this. We need to fit that door. Okay, and then we're going to fit the spare wheel and those sides on. So this door, as you know, it's already been weathered and rubbed and everything. I'm going to fit this in here. I'm going to have it open. So it's going to kind of look fits into that corner beautifully. It's going to kind of look like that. Okay, so we look at the cab, you'll see it open. And when you look in from the back, you'll see right through to the front. That's the objective. Now, the problem here is going to be getting this door to stick. Now, as I said before, with super glue, it's very brittle. So what I'm going to do, I've got a pin pointy tool here. It's got a it's a pin tool, just, it's just a sharp point. So I'm going to go into this corner and I'm going to scrape away the paint. And now that I've got a nice, good, sharp corner referenced in there, I could come in with a blade and just scrape up there. Okay, so what I've done is remove the paint. And I've got a witness of the plastic showing through. On this one here, I'm going to take a sander. And just sand across that corner. So again, I've got plastic. And I'm going to put this door into position. Okay, I'm going to hold it there in position. And then I'm going to take some Tamiya Extra Thin. I think what I have to do is turn it around because I want to go from the back. There we go. I'm just pushing that door into the recess. I'm going to take some Extra Thin and run it into there. Get plenty in there. Get it nice and wet. You can see it ran over that paint with them, but as long as you don't touch it, it'll be fine. Okay, and just hold it like that. And I can see here it's capillaried underneath the door. So we really especially do not want to touch that, move that door now. All right, so that's that door glued in place. And because I've used extra thin, it'll be welded in place. It won't just fall out. Whereas if we use super glue, I'm kind of wondering, did it capillary under the door? Yes, it did. I'd like to have had it a bit more open than that, but unfortunately the glue has gone underneath the door. So it's going to leave a line behind if I, uh, if I move it now. But I would have liked to have had it more open than that. But that's fine. It's just like it's just been left like that. Okay, it's kind of, it's a shame really it didn't have operating steering. We could have had the wheel steering, but I didn't want to go that deep into, for a beginner's video. But um, basically, it kind of just leaves... Just think about it as it would have been left. It's like when a pilot gets out of an aircraft just after it's landed, he doesn't take the harnesses off and then neatly pile them on the seat. You see people build model aircraft and the harnesses are perfect on the seat and they're perfectly folded over in the seat. They wouldn't leave them like that. Yes, the flight engineers would probably correct it and sort it all out, but certainly the pilot wouldn't leave it like that. So, yeah, it's a shame. I wanted to have that door sort of more open like that, sort of like that, but you can see that we've got that stain on the floor. I don't think I can wipe it away, can I? No, it's, it's attacked the paint, so we're going to have to have the door in that position there. Okay. So we're going to have to have it like that, unfortunately. So there's a lesson, you know, it's good that I'm showing you things going wrong in a way. You know, make sure you've got things positioned where you want them before you start going in with the glue. 
So there we are. In fact, I can have a look at more open because once the roof is on, you're not going to be able to look down in there. You're not going to see that and you're not going to see it from the back in there. So I can actually afford to have it a bit more open and maybe I'll just go with a little bit of brown paint and just touch it in. But yeah, I can have the door like that. There you go. So what I'm going to do now is go with some more glue. Hey! I want it to be glued at the bottom because it'll make it a lot more solid. There we are. So that door is now glued at the bottom. You can, I don't know if you can see the shiny line. So now, now I do need to leave it alone. In fact, I will just put one more drop down here because I've been flexing it. There we go. And then what I can do down there is just touch it with that brown paint or I can just put a mark there or whatever. But I think you don't understand what I'm saying. When you look at it now, you can look down here and you can see that horrible mark where the door was that I'm pointing at. But when the roof is on, you won't be able to look there. You can only look in from the back. So you can't see it when you're looking from the back. You can't see it when you're looking from the side because the spare wheel thing is in the way. You can't see it from the front because the door is in the way. The only way you'll see it is if you're looking from here. You won't be able to see it from there because the windscreen's in the way. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll touch a bit of brown paint on there just to hide it a little bit, but it'll look great. Right, so I'm glad I got to show you a cock up. There we are. So we'll, he says he's going to leave it alone, then he keeps messing with it. There we go. Right, so that's how I wanted that to look. Um, so I think what we can do now is look at getting the driver's seat in because that needs to go in. Again, the driver's seat has had a nice coat of matte varnish. I'm going to sand the bottom of the seat to get a nice glue area. I'm going to get my curved blade and just remove some paint from here. And then I'm going to put the seat in position. Like so. I didn't blow the seat off. We've got dust all around the edge. You can see it gives like a light line. I'm going to blow the seat off, get the seat fitted. I'm sure that's correct. Yeah, that is correct. And then again with the extra thin, we can just come in and touch that corner. And it will run around. And then here we can just go in from the back and then it won't be so obvious. Just touch in there and it will run around. And there we go, that's our seat in place. So now we can see it's all starting to come together and the cab's starting to look pretty darn good. And now we've got to look at getting these side panels fitted. Okay, so looking at this. They're telling us the instructions to fit the build these side panels up as we've done without the stretchers and then fit them in. So what they're basically saying is to fit this in here. Okay, so that's going to fit into there like that. So this is going to butt up against the back of the bulkhead and then this is going to sit down here. But if you look closely where they're showing the red line where the glue is, it's not up against this edge here. It's not going to sit up against that part, up against that lip. It's going to sit slightly away from it. So you've got to guarantee you've got everything nice and square so that it's all going to fit nicely. So when you look at these side panels, they have these three little lugs on them. One, two and three. And they will fit into the recess behind there. So that will fit on there really snug and then what happens is these side panels will go on and the way these side panels let me turn all this around so you can see in fact I'll do it without the interior on the way these side panels fit you've got this cut out in here and that goes over that lip there and then the side of the goes up the side of the side panel goes up against the bulkhead yes I've managed to sand away some of the khaki paint on there I have to touch that in but basically, the way that's going to go on there, 
that's going to sit down and there is a little tiny step for it to sit against. So basically the position of the interior is going to determine that. Well I would rather fit the outer panel, have that all fitting nice and square and solid and everything, and then fit the inside to it. Or fit the inside to the outer panel like so, and then once they're dry, just put it all together. So that's what we're going to do. We've got those three lugs and they hold that really, really nicely. And you can see there is a slight, because we've got this, it's very difficult to show you. Because on here we have this, let's try and get it in the light so it picks it up, but there is a step there. Okay, where I've got that tool there, there is a step. I've made a line in the paintwork now so you can see it. There you go. There is a step and the interior panel is going to sit on this side of the step and the exterior panel is going to sit on this side of the step. So we need to come along with a knife and remove the paint from there. Now this paint is difficult to move because it's been on there for about a month. Yes, I've been doing these videos that long. If you're doing yours sort of in a few days, the paint will be very easy to remove. I'm just removing the paint from there so we get a lovely fit when we come to fit the side panel on. So I'm going to turn the camera off, do the other side and get it all cleaned up. Okay, so I've got that cleaned up now, so we've got all the paint removed from there. I'm going to take a sanding stick and remove the paint from the side of the bulkhead here. And it's just to ensure we get a lovely strong clean joint. Now we've got no paint on the bottom edge here, we've got no paint on the bottom edge there, so that's all good. So now what we could do is looking at, start looking at fitting in these interior panels. There's another benefit to doing it this way I've thought of, is basically we don't need to glue the interior in. We're going to glue the interior to the side and then we're going to glue the side to the outside. So we're not going to mess up our nice paintwork on the inside. So as you can see that fits on there beautifully. Okay, it's got a little bit of a play in it, front and back. Actually no it hasn't, I didn't have it on there properly. It's got a tiny bit of play in it. So what I'm going to do is offer it up to the body, okay, fit that, fit that tab there into that slot, get it all to fit nice and snug, hold it together, get some extra thin, and run it into there and let it capillary in. Because there's a small gap, the glue will be, will be drawn into that gap by capillary action. Okay, so that's that in there, and we can hold that in place, we'll do the same on the top. We are. So that's now held on there, so now what we can do is dry fit that onto there. Let's turn this around so you can see what I'm doing. We're going to dry fit that onto there, make sure that side there goes into that slot. Make sure the side drops down onto that groove on the outside that we've just cleaned up. Make sure our interior is up against the bulkhead, which it is. Make sure our interior is down against the floor, which it is. And there we go, and now we can take that off and let it dry. We can do exactly the same on the other side. So we'll put that like that. And if the, if if experienced modelers are going to comment that why am I doing all this is going to confuse the beginners, I've actually found an easier way of putting it together. But in Airfix's defence, telling you to do it this way means people would have plonked that on there, glued it, and then found it didn't fit. So tr trying to tell people to do it this way in the instructions, in a pictorial instruction, is a lot harder than it is for me to do it while I'm talking to you on a video. 
So all well, fair play to Airfix. I think they've probably chosen the best option. So I can hold that against there. It's down against the floor. The side is up against there. It's all nice and snug. Everything is in position. So we'll do the same again. We'll put some glue down in that gap there. Put some glue down in that gap there. Put some in the middle just for good luck. Give that a squeeze. Turn it over. And there we go. That is our side panel all glued together. Just put some down in there as well. So I'll put some in there on this one as well and then what we got about seven minutes left then we can drop that in there make sure oops make sure our side has gone into that slot at the front the sides fitting down nice and snug it's up against the bulkhead the interior is all nice and snug against the floor there we are we can take that away and let that dry so there we go guys we are now in a situation where we can leave this to dry the main thing we mustn't do is forget we must not forget to put our spare wheel in so I'll tell you what I'm going to do that now we must not forget to fit the spare wheel now the spare wheel tire is not going to weather anything because we're going to imagine it's a brand new tire and that will just slot in like that So there we go, that'll just sit in there like that. And then that side panel will go on. And that will retain it in position, I'm guessing. Yeah, that ain't going nowhere. So there we are. As you can see, it's really, really we've had a few videos of a bit of a slow progress and showing you how to do this, that, and the other, but you can see now. And it's really in one video it's really starting to come together we put this other side on here and we can see that the the cab is really going to start looking the part I can't get it to line up I'm trying to see what I'm doing there we go so we can see now we've got our cab there all done we've got our passenger seat over there we've got the door we can look inside and see some detail we can look in the back we can see out the front hello so uh got some bits of plastic dust in there but um all in all what a lovely little model this is and then when we've got our stretchers in there we can see just how lovely it's all gonna look Slide those stretchers in like that. One in the bottom there. Like that. One on the top. And hopefully you can now see what I've been talking about, about different colours. We've got different sheens. We've got some shiny in there. We've got dead matte. We've got semi-gloss. We've got clean dirty everything all in one little model one little area and you can see when we've got the roof on you know it's a, it's a great little eye catcher looking in the back there so um there we are guys so as i say i want to leave all this now to dry but that's i'm not going to move that spare wheel because i know i'll forget forget to put it in and then we're knackered so uh, we'll leave that now to dry. Everything's covered in plastic dust from me scraping those sides. Leave all that to dry and then um, we'll get it all together in the next part, which I believe is going to be part 11. Yeah, this is part 10. And uh, yeah, and just got a couple of minutes. Let's just have a look and see how it looks when it's all fitted onto the chassis. Go on, you know you want to. Here we are. It doesn't want to go on. It's such a lovely fit, and this is a, this kit is beautifully engineered. 
really does fit together very nicely indeed there we go it's gone together so you can see now we're starting to get the the look of a an actual vehicle rather than a load of beige plastic parts so there you go so that's going to be it for this part 10 we're going to be getting all that together and then we're going to start on the sorry this has been part 10 part 11 we're going to start uh, looking at getting all the the dashboard and everything in together and then we're going to get the roof on so there's lots and lots to do we might even put a put some dust and stuff on the windscreen and then wipe it away we shall see and then we're going to put the roof on there and then we're looking at i won't bother the doors yet and then we'll put all the bottom in here paint all that and then i guess we're going to get it attached to the chassis yep yeah. and we're nearly there so stay tuned um and hopefully if you're building along you're you're enjoying this and uh, i will see you all soon for part 11 thank you for watching thank you for your time and I hope you've liked this video don't forget to hit the like and if you haven't already please hit the subscribe and i'll see you all soon for part 11 bye for now